Thank you, Pastor Ronnie. And I am very blessed uh, to be here with you this morning to worship our Lord Jesus Christ together. The timing of God is always perfect. There is no accidents with God. With Him, everything in His time is about His purpose. There is a purpose of God why we are here this morning. First and foremost, on the first day of every week, we come to the Father's house to bring the sacrifices of praise and worship, to bring our sacrifice of that from out of what God has given to us, that we offer it up at the altars of God to Him. And ultimately, the, the one sacrifice that God requires of His children, His people, is the living sacrifice of our life. That this life does not belong to us. We were bought with a price. God has done a marvelous work in every one of our lives. That as children of God, we come before Him with a grateful heart and with thanksgiving we seek the face of God. The word of God tells us that God is not a man that he would lie. So every word of God and all that is written, every promise of God, he backs it with his character of truth that everything he, that he says must come to pass. Jesus, when he was here on earth, everywhere he went, he went about showing the nature of the Father. Jesus said when he answered Philip the Apostle, he said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Jesus came as the express image of God. The radiance of his glory was upon him, as he says in the book of Hebrews chapter 1 in verse 3. And therefore everywhere Jesus went, he revealed God and his kingdom to mankind. And this morning you are in the Father's house, that is the church. And when we are in the Father's house, God has already chosen that He will never again be a mystery to man. From the time that He sent Jesus 2,000 years ago into this world to reveal of Himself to us so that we would know God and that we would experience God in every one of our lives. Therefore, when Jesus was here on earth, he performed miracles. By signs and wonders and miracles, he showed what is the nature of God. Today I stand and put my hand on this piece of furniture, the pulpit. It is beautiful. It's very well made. It is so presentable that it can be right here in front of everybody's eyes. When you look at this piece of furniture or equipment, we will say that it is well made by somebody. It is man-made. And so it is a product of man. It is natural as man is a natural being. But when we say that this is the work of God, God is not natural. God is supernatural. And therefore a work of God is beyond, it passes human ability it goes beyond man's enablement. The work of God is supernatural. And therefore when Jesus was here on earth, we say that he did the work of God. Everywhere he went, those that were sick that came to him, he healed them. Blind eyes were opened, the crippled got up and walk because that is the power of Almighty God when Jesus was about ready 
to go to die the death of the cross he began to speak to his followers to prepare them that he's gonna go away now this was something very strange they never expected it to be that it will ever happen everything was going so great if Jesus was walking the earth today in the flesh then he would hit the headlines every day he'll make world news every day no one could do the works that Jesus did up until his time they did not know what it means to experience the manifestation of the power and presence of Almighty God and so they couldn't understand they could not fathom in their minds or their thinking how could it be possible Jesus what are you talking about that you're gonna be leaving us the Bible records in the book of John and it says in John chapter 16 in verse 7 Jesus said these words that was so baffling to the people Jesus said it is advantageous that I go it is for your benefit that I must leave the earth what does it mean he says that if I do not go then the comforter the Holy Spirit he will not come Jesus begin at that time to introduce to mankind God the Holy Spirit he says if I go I will send him the father will send him to you he says but when I go I will not leave you as it says in John chapter 14 in verse 16 I will not leave you as orphans destitute in those days 2,000 years ago the time when Jesus was here on earth if you were an orphan life is very hard and it is such that your fate in life is determined predetermined that you'll never come out of your condition you'll never have a chance in life you will be for all of your life disadvantaged you will go on grow up in life grow old and die as a destitute as someone that is forgotten forsaken with no status in life lonely rejected by society it's almost like if you're an orphan you are viewed as someone that is cursed Jesus said giving a picture of something that is so terrible Jesus said I will not leave you as orphans destitute but I will send you another comforter watch what he says this word another is the Greek word elos elos another means one has already come but I'm gonna send you another one that is of the same type of the same nature that he contains the very same essence as the one who has come before him that the two will be just as like of the same one even including the one who has sent the two what Jesus was trying to say to the church is that as the father is so is the son so also is God the Spirit and he says as I have been with you 
that as I have come amongst you and as you have come to know me that by knowing me you have known the Father I'm sending you the same that he will come and he will be every expression of God the Holy Spirit who is coming he says in John chapter 14 in verse 17 that he is also the spirit of truth Jesus the Bible records when he is first introduced by the father to mankind what did the father say about Jesus how did he first introduce him to us it says in John chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word Almighty God created the heavens and the earth the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 in verse 1 onwards he says that the world was made it was formed fitted and furnished by the word of his mouth when God created the heavens and the earth he spoke and by the word of his mouth creation took place it is power the power of God there is power in the word of God and that power of God spoke the worlds into existence John chapter 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word created without him there was nothing that was made and it says in verse 14 the word became flesh and dwelled amongst men and that scripture is talking about Jesus 2,000 years ago when Creator God the Son of God came into this world and was made flesh and blood as we are the Word and therefore when Jesus said God the Spirit will come he is the Spirit of truth because every word that God speaks there is zero margin of error it is infallible the Word of God is truth that everything that God says is as is today when you look around you just like this gentleman at the end of the first row and, and, and you look at him and you look at his shirt and you say his shirt is white yeah it is white we can all say he's wearing a white shirt but if you hear God's voice after you have spoken and when you hear God's voice and he says his shirt is red guess what happens to his shirt color immediately it cannot stay white it has to be red because his word is truth that is the power of God's word and therefore on the day of creation when the Word of God says in the book of Genesis chapter 1 there was darkness that fills the atmosphere it was dark and God spoke and he says let there be light can you imagine what happened before your eyes can blink that darkness now is invaded by a light that comes that up until that time it was non-existent there was nothing that was anything that tells you that there is such a thing as light and light came by the word of his mouth Therefore, when Jesus was here on earth, everywhere he went, 
the Bible records as it is written in the book of Matthew chapter 8 that everywhere Jesus went he spoke and by the word of his mouth as he spoke demons were cast out by his word the oppressed was set free and by his word everyone that was sick were healed and they received their miracle that's the power of almighty god in the book of john chapter 6 in verse 63 these are the words of jesus the spirit gives life The words of man, they do not benefit. It is not profitable. My words and the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. This morning, I give to you from out of the word of God, the written voice of God, the Holy Bible. These are the thoughts of God that comes from his mind. Words that God wants to bring to mankind. And these are truths. It was a fact that the atmosphere before light came was filled with darkness that was a fact and facts will always change but when God speaks every word his truth and when truth falls from his lips it alters the fact to become different you may have come today with a sickness on your body and it is a fact what the doctors have said to you maybe it is a fact it is a fact that right now somebody can feel the pain because of your sickness that is a fact but are you ready for truth because that truth can immediately change the facts and give you something that you never have come with you this morning you've not brought it you've brought a sickness with you but are you ready for truth to drive out that sickness to alter that fact that I came with a sickness now I'm going home with a miracle from God I am healed that is the power of God's word Jesus said the words of man are not profitable but the word of God if you receive his word they are spirit and they are life Jesus continues to tell us about the Holy Spirit you see sometimes people are afraid of the Holy Spirit we don't need to re to be afraid of the Holy Spirit he's not Gaspar the ghost he's not the Gemini man He's not someone that forces his way on people. Jesus would never do that. He's the same spirit. God is good and good all the time. God who is supernatural. He's not here to oppress. There is no evil that is found in him. Everywhere Jesus went, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38. This is what it says, Jesus was anointed 
of the Holy Ghost and of power. When he was here on earth, he was given of the Holy Spirit and of power. And everywhere he went, he did good. Every work of God is good. He did good. Whereby the Holy Spirit and power. He caused those that were bound to be free. And those that were sick. He healed them. As it says in Acts 10, 38. Jesus continues to introduce to us the Holy Spirit. He says he will not leave you. He will be with you. Why is this so important? Why is it so important that we get to know the Holy Spirit? And we get to desire that we want the Holy Spirit. We want more of Him. As the same as we say, we want more of Jesus. We want more of God the Spirit. Because if Jesus is alive and here today like he was 2,000 years ago in Galilee, in Jerusalem and in Samaria, what would happen? I will tell you that back where I am at the school of Acts, I won't get the Holy Spirit. Why? Because you have powerful men of God and women of God here. And they will say, I want, I want Jesus here. And if he, and you, you, Pastor Jeremiah, Pastor Ron, if they keep Jesus here, then I won't have him where I am. Then Jesus will not be in Africa. Jesus will not be in America because he's at New Life Restoration today. Because Jesus was made flesh and blood for the purpose that he would die like man on the cross. Because God is just. There is no unrighteousness in Him. And for the battle for our soul to be won, that are the price for the forgiveness of sins is paid without foul play. Jesus had to be made a man so that He take our place and identify Himself in truth as we are so that He will defeat and destroy the works of Satan over our lives and break the curse of sin over you and I that by dying as a man on the cross it is the righteousness of God that he must pay the price as it were we paying the price but now that Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for the forgiveness of our sins we receive the grace of God if we call on Jesus and say, Yes, Jesus, I want to receive that atonement and I want to receive the benefit of what you have done for me on the cross by dying upon it and suffered and died in my place that I will receive eternal life, the forgiveness of sins and return back to Almighty God, my Creator, when I receive, when I said I accept. Jesus as my Savior. Today, you don't have to go home carrying your load of sins coming here. You've been searching for how you can shake it off, get rid of that. The burden of sins where ever so now and then you feel the guilt, you feel the condemnation. You feel that you've got to do something, it's not enough. You don't know what more to do that you can be free from the condemnation of sins and receive what it is and you don't know what it means and what it is to have the peace of God you can experience that today before you go and God is here to give it to you what Jesus has prepared for you but here is Jesus as like one of us. And that's why Jesus said, the time has come for something much better. 
The time has come, matter of fact, for the very best that God has planned for the whole world and throughout generations coming into this generation today and in the generations to come. Where the plan of God is saying that when Jesus has finished his work on earth, God the Spirit will come. So that as Jesus was at that time, that he could only be in one place at one time. Now God is everywhere present. Now God is here in this place. Because he is no longer in the form of a man. He is spirit. That wherever you are, God's presence is there. Because his presence fills the earth. His spirit moves around the world. Throughout this nation. In every place and right here he is here in this place Jesus he says of the Holy Spirit when he comes in the book of John chapter 15 he says when the Holy Spirit comes in verse 26 he will testify of me. What does it mean? The night before when I was in Sitiawan, the Holy Spirit through me testify of Jesus. How? If you were here last night, you see you have seen how the Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus. Someone who testifies will say, I can tell you what happened. And I can tell you why it happened. I can tell you the evidence and present them to you. I've seen it. I know it. And here is God the Spirit telling you about how Jesus meet the needs of mankind and how he meets us at the point of our needs whatsoever that need may be that right there you experience the touch of the living God and receive your healing as God performs a miracle what God the Spirit is when the Spirit of God is present he will do everything like Jesus is here. He will bring the word that speaks into our hearts, that pierces our hearts, that pricks our hearts, uh, that brings faith into our hearts. God the Spirit will be testifying that this is what it, like, it is like as it were that Jesus is present. If Jesus will come into the room, this is what will happen. And the Holy Spirit will show you, will present to you exactly as it were that Jesus has come. And so therefore, he says, the Holy Spirit will testify that I am the healer. That the Holy Spirit will testify that I'm still in the healing business. That I can still heal the sick. That I will still touch your body. That I will still give you a miracle. That I can still set you free from your pains. The Holy Spirit will testify that my word is truth. And there is power in my word. The Holy Spirit will testify that the cripple can be healed. The blind eyes can open. My spirit, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit will testify that you can be healed of your condition. They also say that the Holy Spirit will glorify me. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will come. 
John chapter 16 verse 14. He will glorify me. That everything that happens when the Holy Spirit is present, everything that you see Him do, everything that happens in that place, Jesus is glorified. That everyone will know, oh yes, how wonderful Jesus is, how powerful Jesus is. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. This morning, I'm glad that we are here. But if the Holy Spirit is not present, we will just have a gathering of people. It will just be activities. That everything about a group of people coming together and doing things that we've decided is going to be common to us, familiar even with most of you. Without the Holy Spirit, everything will be man made and it will be resulting in the product of man. We just have a jolly good time and it will be whatever it is that we said would come to church this place this building is connected to everything that is built around this place it's a building but what makes it different It is because we call this the church. But we have to go beyond what it is that is church. Because it's one thing to have come into a church, but it is another thing to come into the presence of God. You've done well to come to church. But have you entered the presence of God? Are you in the presence of God? And what the Bible is saying is the Holy Spirit, God the Spirit, that you have welcomed Him, that He's in this place. That he is here because we desire God the Spirit. We have come to seek the face of God. And we have an expectation that because God the Spirit is here, he will testify of Jesus. We will get to see, as it were, Jesus is in our midst. We will see the works, the manifestations that will glorify Jesus. That it is not just about us speaking and, and repeating that in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. But it is the manifestation of what happens by the mighty name of Jesus. The presence of the Holy Spirit is here today. And for this time that we have been so far, we have been reaching out to connect with God the Spirit. There's a shift in this atmosphere. There is a shift that is in our hearts because of the work of God the Spirit. That by that connection with God the Spirit, something marvelous will happen for you in your life. In a few moments, I will begin to pray the miracle prayers. Early this morning, when I was praying 
for this morning. God said to me that there are people here today who are sick and you need a miracle from God. And God wants to heal you today. God wants to give you a miracle this morning. You don't have to go home with your sickness. You can leave it behind and go home with a miracle from God. The power of Almighty God is already in this building. Ready to touch you and heal you. It does not matter what the doctors say, nor how long you have been sick. What you need to know is what God says to you this morning. What you need today, it is not the touch of a man. What you need today it's a touch of God. And God is a spirit. He's right by the side of every person here right now. What you need today is for God to touch you and give to you a miracle from Him. In the book of Psalm 107, listen to the voice of God. The power of his word, Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are alive. It says in verse 20 of Psalm 107, God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. God sent his word. And this morning, God has sent his word to heal. I want you to get ready for your miracle. I am going to pray more than one miracle prayer this morning. But in this first miracle prayer, there are three kinds of sicknesses that God wants to heal. Listen to me carefully. Number one, if you have a bone condition, backbone lower back condition you have a problem with your kneecaps or you have a frozen shoulder or you are suffering from arthritis or rheumatism God wants to heal you tonight today if you have a problem with your neck or your shoulders or you have problems with your mobility. God wants to heal you this morning. You may suffer from scoliosis, a crooked back, all your problems with gout. God wants to heal you this morning. If you have come with injuries, it could be a fall or an accident, or you suffered a stroke, something is wrong from the fall or the accident or the stroke, and you may be immobilized or partially. God wants to give you a miracle this morning. The power of Almighty God is already in this place number two you're suffering from an eye condition you have cataracts 
blur vision. God wants to remove the cataracts. Right here this morning. You may be suffering from double vision, blur vision, whatever it is that affects your eyesight. God wants to heal you today. Your blindness, retainer detachment, whatever that's wrong with your eyes, God wants to heal you now. Number three. You're suffering from a stomach problem. You have gastric. You have ulcers in your stomach. God wants to heal you today. Or it could be cancer in your stomach, intestines. God wants to heal you today. You may have a growth, a tumor that's in your stomach. God wants to remove that from you today. Whatever that's wrong, that you can feel now, the discomfort or the pains, or you know what it is that's inside that's wrong, God wants to set you free this morning. Three kinds of sicknesses. God wants to heal the bone that could be muscles connected to it, nerves connected to it, God wants to set you free. Number two, you have eyesight problems. God wants to correct them. You cannot see far. You cannot read. God wants to heal you this morning. Number three, you have stomach conditions. That's people here today that you've got problems with ulcers, gas, gastric, and, and, and different problems with uh, with. What's wrong with your stomach? Uh, it, it's intestines and cancer that's inside your stomach or growth inside the stomach. God wants to heal you this morning. If you have any of these three conditions and you're ready to receive your miracle, I want you to stand up quickly right now. Stand up on your feet. God knows you're here. You are here. And God wants to give you a miracle today. The rest of you, please remain seated. We'll pray the next miracle prayer later on. But God knows the many of you that requires a miracle from God. God, the Spirit is right by your side, ready to touch you. The power of Almighty God is here now in this building. Ready to flow into your body. Before I pray, I will ask you. You don't have to do it now, but I will ask you. To put your hand over your sickness that represents that sickness, wherever it is, you place your hand over that place. If it is your back, put your hand on your back or your knees, put your hand over your knees or your stomach, place your hand over there, your eyes, you put your hand over there. If you have more than two places, you only have two hands, put your hand on your forehead. When I pray the miracle prayer, the power of Almighty God will be on your body. Starts to flow in. Don't worry about what you feel. That's the power of God on you. The power of God will flow over your sickness to heal. When I finish, I want every one of you that are standing to remain standing. Do not sit down. When I finish, the power of Almighty God will be on your body. At that time, I will give you another instruction. You will check. Do what you cannot do before. You'll do it. If you need to get out to the house and move your body and bend or whatever it is, you move to the, to the house and so that you have space. Some of you may need to run or jump or jog on, on the spot or, or, or whatever you need to do to check and find that the sickness is gone, the pain is gone. And God has given you back your mobility. Check your eyes by looking at something that is here or somewhere around. And, or if it is about reading, then you open your Bible, you look at it, and you'll find that God has cleared up your vision. Or if it is the stomach, you can know right away that something has happened because that feeling or that symptom is gone. And the power of God has healed you. Now get ready, I'm going to pray now. Put your hand over your sickness. 
People are already receiving their miracles. The power of God is already flowing over some of your bodies. I can see God is healing some people already before I even start to pray. In the name of Jesus, I bind that spirit of arthritis and rheumatism. I bind backbone and spinal conditions. In the name of Jesus, I lose their necks and their shoulders. In the name of Jesus, I command their kneecaps to be free. There it goes. There it goes. In Jesus' name, I undo everything that limits their movements. There he goes. There he goes. In the name of Jesus. I bind you foul crippling spirit. In the name of Jesus. Go from them now. Foul spirit of paralysis. Go now. In Jesus name. In the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit of blindness. In the name of Jesus, cataracts be removed. In Jesus' name, I command your vision to clear up. In the name of Jesus, right from the eyeballs to the socket, right down to the retina, every nerve. That is in the in the name of Jesus. I speak a reverse of that condition. In the name of Jesus, I command those eyes to be corrected. In Jesus' name, I bind that spirit of gastric. Go now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I curse every growth to die at its roots. In the name of Jesus, I curse every cancer cells to die. I uproot cancer cells now in Jesus' name. And in the name of Jesus, pain go and never return. In the name of Jesus, I release the healing power of God now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Receive your miracle now. In the name of Jesus, receive God's power. Be healed in Jesus' name. There it goes. That's the power of God flowing down on your body now. Receive your miracle now. Be healed in Jesus' name. All the way from the back to the front. From my right to my left. Miracles are happening. That's the power of God working on your body. To heal you of your condition. Quickly, take your hands off. Open your eyes. Look up here now. Now, do what you cannot do before. Check. Check your eyes. Check. Look around. Check. Check your body. Check. Check your stomach. Do what you cannot do before. Check quickly. You find that God has healed you. The pain is gone. Your vision is clear. Do what you cannot do before. Check everybody. Check those of you that are standing up. Do what you cannot do before right away. And you'll find that the pain is gone. That's right. Check. Yes. Do, do it quickly. You find that a miracle has happened. And you're free from your pains. Your, your mobility returns. Check your eyes. That you can see again clearly. That's the power of Almighty God. This is an important moment for you. Because this is the time when you know for sure that God has healed you and you are going away with a miracle. Check, check, check. God has done marvelous things. Miracles have happened. Check, keep checking. Do what you cannot do before. Check it. Check it, check it, check it. Check, yeah. God has healed, yes. Yeah, miracles. Because it's the power of Almighty God. Now, if you are checking, go ahead and keep checking. Now, if you have checked 
and you found that the pain is gone you found that your eyesight is cleared up you found that the stomach condition is gone you found that you can move and you got back your mobility you found that God has given you a miracle if you know that God has healed you you know God healed you lift up your hand wave to me lift yes yes somebody else somebody else yes right there someone else God healed you is there somebody else over there on this side you know God healed you lift up your hand to me yeah yeah somebody else lift your hands up over here you don't know yet here here check check you know God healed you you know God has given you a miracle now I know that people are still being checked and you're still checking and you know God has healed you when you do and you find that you are free you know God healed you now one more time by now some of you would know already one more time if you know God has healed you lift up your hand to me wave yes yes up there down here now if you know God healed you I want you to come out from your seats go to my right hand side quickly come out here go workers help them as they come there some more at the back if God has healed you come on down to my right hand side right there please sir come on I want to talk to you come come somebody else that have been healed come to my right hand side tell them what God has done for you God has healed you God has healed you go over to my right hand side the power of God is still on your body you keep checking and you will find that God has given you a miracle when you know that you have a miracle come to my right hand side praise God praise God there you are there are some more coming down you check and you realize that God has healed you go ahead and come welcome come on down there's some more coming come go to my right hand side workers please see them coming please get them right there right there some somebody else help bring them over closer there's somebody else there's a lady in wearing black yes come on over that side is there anybody else now even while I'm talking to them the power of God is still on your body and as I'm talking to them and as you're listening to this testimonies you keep checking and you'll find that God has healed you and when you know God healed you come on down to my right hand side and tell us what God has done for you praise God for these miracles now I'm ready to take one come find out what happened listen to this miracle look what God has done what happened I, I have pain in my knee. I couldn't squat for a long time already. Many years. Many years? Yeah. How many years? More than five years, maybe seven years. Seven years. Yeah, so I then never go to the uh, squatting ladies. No. I, can, I can never squat. You could not squat? I could not squat. Now that makes everyday life inconvenient. Yes. So I couldn't squat. I couldn't walk properly. That is difficult. Yes. So I'm so thankful huh, that today I managed to squat. Wow. <laughs> you know, these, these, are, these are tears of joy. <laughs> she is so happy. These are tears of joy. Do you know what it is that you cannot use your knees and your legs? Five years or more. No, seven years like that. Seven years. Would you bend now? Go ahead and... <laughs> wow this is totally new yes uh, totally new yes yes i couldn't squat at all even if i squat i cannot get up i've got to pull you know the sides whatever just how up. amazing god healed you today yes amen and, and and when you squat you cannot get up i couldn't get up at all and, and you do you have pain also uh, yes definitely i can I, sometimes i can feel my kneecap going crook, crook, like that and know? now it's gone uh, now i don't feel i, I didn't hear the, the crack sound it's gone yes bend now one more time wow praise god for this miracle god healed her today Amen. now when you do your housework when you go about your work it must be very hard 
Yes, so I don't bend. I just, I just do whatever I can. Praise God for this miracle. It changes you once again. God bless you. God bless you. Go ahead. Wonderful. Come. What happened, ma'am? What happened? I, three years ago, I had scoliosis. Oh. Yeah. So I, I couldn't walk far. I couldn't do much work. I would be hunching. You will be hunching? Yeah, because of my scoliosis. And, and you cannot walk far. So when I walk floor, when I do work, I need to lie down the bed and rest for at least one hour, able to stand straight again. And how do you know God healed you this morning? I have faith. I believe God. But is there anything that changed? Yes, now I feel I can walk, stand straight. Look at this miracle. <laughs> Wonderful. Walk with me. Just go ahead and walk. Now, before, you will be hunched. Yeah, I'll be hunching. People now, see me will be hunching. You, they will see you. Yeah. Now, show them what it's like when you hunch. Like this. Yeah. Now, ha do you know this lady? You know? Is, does she walk with a hunch like this? Yeah. Before this, do you, does she walk with a hunch? Then you bend over? Yeah, I hunch. And now? The husband. No, no, it's my church friend. No. Your church friend. Your church friend. That's how she walks before. Even when she's coming in. Even when she's coming in. Come, come tell. No, no, no. Come, just right here, right here. Good. Yeah. What did you say? Even when this morning when she's coming in, she was uh, walking. Like uh, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, praise God. Now, just walk, walk again. Look at this miracle. God healed her. Praise God for this miracle. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and go. I have knee problems. And it's gone. When I squat down, I, I couldn't get up. Like that. Otherwise, I couldn't. Now I can. Look at this miracle. She can get up now. Before that, she has to push herself. Push the floor to get up. You have. Yeah, I couldn't get up to push the floor to get up. I have to push the floor. Now I can. Look at this wonderful miracle. No pain. No pain. And God healed you. Yes. And um, I also have shoulder pain. Now, okay, no pain. No pain. No, no pain. Well, I, I tell you, God gave you bonus today. You got bonus. You got no, not just one miracle, three. Yeah, and then I had... Oh, one a, more. Okay. No, I have... I went for endoscopy. I found out that I had a stomach inflammation. Yes. I went for CT scan. I found out that I had ovarian cysts. And you are believing God that yeah, your next test, yes, you I will believe. see the miracle. Yes. Oh, praise God. Come on, everybody. What faith? That faith comes by experience. Now she has experiential knowledge that Jesus heals. Praise God for this miracle. I've been waiting for so long for this healing service. And now it's come to Yeah, and then Pastor Raymond Mui, when I shared with my sister, my sister is, uh, my sister has migrated to Australia for 21 years. Right. So when I show her that I'll be attending this Sunday service with you for the healing in service. This church, yes. Yeah, and then my sister said, Do you remember last time when my sister was in a, a TVS, Tabernacle Vine Sanctuary in Subang Jaya? He said, This uh, Pastor Reverend Raymond Mui was the one who prayed for healing. I, I had a tiny cyst. A cyst? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was more than 30 years ago. And, and it's gone. I, yeah, I said I remember God's healing, but I didn't know, I couldn't remember the person. And my sister told me it was Reverend Raymond Mui. Your eye? Yeah. It, Your was, eye. it was you. I wow. couldn't remember. Wow. I had a tiny cyst here. Blessed to know you. Yeah. Blessed to meet you yeah. after 30 no, years. Yeah. More than 30 years. <laughs> the, in more Subang than we got connected. Yeah. Praise God. 30 years ago, there was a growth, a cyst on her left, uh, uh, left eye, yeah. and it was gone right yeah. away. Yeah. 30 years, and your eyes are good. Yeah. Praise God for this miracle. <laughs> Wonderful. And here, God healed you again. Go ahead and go this way. What happened to you? More than a year, she's seeing flashing of lights. Yes, I have flashing lights on both eyes. It disturbs me. Uh, but now it's totally gone. gone. It's not there anymore. Yeah. Flashing. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Just lots of movements. Yes. And, and very eyes. busy. Yes. Both your eyes. Yes. And it's clear now. It's clear, clear. now. I don't clear. see it. Everywhere. You don't see it. I don't see it. Yeah. Wonderful. Praise God. How long have you had this? More than a year. It, it's just a border. But God healed you. 
Thank you. Praise God for this miracle. God restored and cleared up both her eyes. Praise God. Hi. Last year she could not see Come. far from her eyes, but now she can see very clearly. Wow. Yeah. Can you take off your mask so they can see you? All right. Now, you for a year now. Yeah, I know. Last year only. Last year only. Mm. And you couldn't see far. Uh, yeah, I couldn't. You couldn't. It's blurred. blurred. Like, yeah. It's like uh, the other eye is clearer than the other eye. Which eye is not good before? Right eye. Your right eye. Mm. You cannot see clearly. Yeah. Now you close your, you close this eye. Clo yeah, go ahead and close it. Yeah. Can you see clearly? Yes, I can. Can you read the time? 11.26. Wow. She can see it and she can read it clearly. What a marvelous miracle of God. I, I didn't want to hear her to tell you the time, but just want to tell you what a miracle of God. Well, she told you the time is not late. It's good time. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God for this wonderful miracle. God bless you. I want to pray the next miracle prayer. If you're suffering from cancer, wherever it may be, Cancer sounds like something that is terrifying. And you don't want to be people to mention that name, cancer. But I want to tell you that that name, cancer, there is a name that is far higher than that name. That is the name that we honor. That is the name that we trust in. The name that is greater than the word cancer is the name of Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, every other name must bow to that name of Jesus. And so this morning, as there are many that testifies because they can't do it right away, they need to go through the test and medical checkups but there are many that will testify that through that process they can declare that they are cancer free because of the name of Jesus number two if you're suffering from a blood condition high blood pressure or you have blood conditions that causes parts of your body to go haywalk or, or problems because of a blood condition it causes it breaking out in skin conditions eczema things that are that are happening as a breakout of toxins that are in your blood god wants to heal you number three if you are suffering from breathing difficulties, you have asthma. God keeps speaking to me about breathing difficulties, so I need to go back to it again. That you have problems with your breathing, that is a lung infection or scars on your lungs, or you're suffering from asthma, or you have sinus. God wants to heal you this morning. Clear it up that you can breathe freely. You may have shortness of breath, difficulties. God wants to heal you. You have any of these three conditions, cancer, or you have blood conditions, that the skin problems is related to it, or whatever ways it breaks out. Or you have number three, breathing difficulties. You're ready for God to heal you. Stand on your feet now. Quickly, just stand up on your feet. God knows you're here. God wants to heal you. Place your hand over the sickness. Get ready to receive your miracle. There it is. That's the power of God on your body. God is healing people already. In the name of Jesus. 
I curse every cancer cells to die. I uproot these cancer cells and I speak new good cells to form. In the name of Jesus, cancer, you must go in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. I bind every blood condition. In Jesus' name. Whichever form it comes, high blood pressure, low blood pressure. In the name of Jesus, I speak correction now. In Jesus' name. Now, be healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I speak for that correction. That condition to reverse now. And the symptoms to go. In the name of Jesus, go. Dizziness, go. There it goes. There it goes. In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of asthma. Go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I uproot sinus clearing of the nose in the name of jesus there he goes there he goes in jesus name lungs be restored now in the name of jesus pain i command you to go and ever return in the name of jesus i release the healing power of god now be healed in jesus name receive your miracle now in the name of jesus there it goes that's the power of god on your body receive your miracle now take your hands off open your eyes look up here now check do what you cannot do before check if you can know where the symptoms are and what has happened to you you can find out then you check breathe you find that your breathing is free do what you cannot do before if you can know now by checking i know that it is assumed that you need to get a medical checkup for this one and you need to go through the test you go ahead and do it but some of you may know now that god has healed you if god has healed you you come on down to the front i want to move on very quickly to another miracle prayer but you can check and if workers you find somebody that god has healed just let me know now please remember that when jesus heals you i know that we are in a culture the malaysian culture that we are hesitant to come out and we're afraid of standing up in front of people why don't you just send an email to your church office write and testify that once you know that you're healed i know that there are other people that god has already healed that you need to testify because jesus deserves the glory every praise belongs to jesus and if you hold it back and don't give it to him the devil steals the story from you and you don't want that to happen you want jesus to get the glory some of you may find out later today tomorrow this week you want to take the test of time you're not even sure what it is like to be healed it's so amazing that you don't even believe that it is possible that's when in a few days you realize that really God has healed me. Send a message to your church and give glory to Jesus. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 that as Jesus is as a living stone rejected of man but beloved of God. Isaiah 53 says that he came and he came to his own and his own refused him, rejected him, received him not. Jesus was a man of sorrow. He says in the next verse of 1 Peter chapter 2 that we also are living stones 
we have been made alive by Jesus. That we also as living stones, we are built up as a spiritual house to offer up spiritual sacrifices to Him. What does it mean? What is the Spirit of God saying to us? That every one of us, as an individual, we had a personal encounter with God, and we realized that we need Jesus because He is the Savior. And we have Him come because we don't want to die one day and don't know where we go and worse, that we know that because without Jesus, we will die in our sins, unforgiven. And the only place where we will be destined with our sins is in hell. And therefore we receive Jesus to be our Savior because we want that free gift that Jesus freely gave to us. And we became children of God. And along the way we learn from the voice of God that as children of God, we have a rich inheritance. That as Galatians chapter 3 tells us, that we received so rich an inheritance as God's children from Him, that we have been cut into the covenant, the promise that is unchangeable, that God gave to Abraham, for all generations coming into our time for us. That God has purpose that every Christian, every child of God will receive that rich inheritance that we will be blessed of God all the days of our lives and this blessing will go even to our children and our children's children. All of those things are so marvelous, so great, so good. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, he says at the same time that we who are the children of God, as God is spirit, his kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom is a spiritual domain. And so as the children of God, what God expects of us is that we will seek Him and we will desire of the things that are of the kingdom of God. That when we have become a child of God, that we are not an island on our own, but He fits us in into a body called the church. And He says that we are as, first of all, individual stones. And as one stone that, yes, as like a soul that is saved. It's like a life that has been transformed. It is like when we were once dead in our sins, as it says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, that we were once dead in our sins. Now we have been made alive by Jesus Christ. It is never God's intention for us to be a lone ranger. But the best is yet to come when He brings all of us together to form a spiritual house. This house of God is a spiritual house. Like when people build a building, if we want 
to build a wooden house what are the ingredients that we will use the material that we would put together to build that house a house that is wooden will be formed and fitted by wood the material used will be wood when we want to build a glass house the main material used for the glass house will be glass when we want to build a concrete structure a concrete building a concrete house it will be made with concrete God says that my house will be a spiritual house what will be the material it must be spiritual materials and it will have to be the things that are that which connects with the Spirit of God the Word of God by prayer our worship what it is that's God's instructions in his word and all of these things are part of the house that is built a spiritual house the centerpiece of the house of God will always be an altar from the Old Testament to the new it will always be the center place an altar that altar of God represents the place where God's people meet with God when we come to the altars of God is when we bring an offering we always talk about the fire of God we need God's visitation we need the glory of God to come down when does fire or the presence of God the fire that represents the raw presence of God when does it come down it comes down at an altar not just at an altar but it comes down when there is a sacrifice place upon the altar you want the manifestation of God's power the problem today is when we want a blessing without a sacrifice we want a breakthrough without us being broken we want miracles without bringing a sacrifice to God we want to see revival without repentance that's where the church is sick and that's why the devil comes and the first thing he does is to remove the altar is to take away the place where the people of God can meet with God the difference between a house of man and a house of God is when there is an altar and what the devil wants to do is it causes people to take away the altar of God and replace it with a stage And the stage becomes a celebrity. What happens on a stage? What do people use a stage for? Performance. And who are those that will perform? Actors. And in the Bible, God calls it pretenders. God calls actors as people that are hypocrites it's everywhere around the world and God brought me here this morning to tell you that it's time for every church everywhere the house of God to once more lift up the altar 
to bring the altar back to the church as the centerpiece of the church. Otherwise, we will just have the stage that will please men. That will simply perform to make you happy, to make you excited, to make you interested. We need the altars of God. We need to come knowing, coming to the house of God, what it means. Yes, we will receive. Yes, we will be blessed. Yes, you will be served. Yes, you will be ministered to. But the attitude of the heart of a true believer of God is I'm coming to the house of God to make a sacrifice. Then we have a chance for revival. Then and only then we have a chance that God will come in greater measures that we have ever seen. I want to tell you again, that's what the job of the devil is from church to church. It is to hide the altar and replace it where actors and hypocrites can stand and act like it and it looks like it is it but it's not it because only at the altars of God that God can rain down fire when the people of God comes with an attitude of sacrifice that it's not what I can get but it's what I can give that I have been given much and I have been blessed much. God, what is it that you require of me? I can come and bring as a sacrifice. In the Old Testament, when God is ready to return back to his people, he always used a man to come and call for the altars to be restored. Why? Because if there is no altars, there is a stage. And the people will not have a chance to really sacrifice. They will never be inspired to come and to come with surrendered lives to God. And to come and say, God, what can I do? How can I serve? What can I give? What do you require of me? But you will be instead teased and given the good stuff, make you feel good, make you feel great. And you never see fire come. I pray this morning. I prayed and I prayed. God would bring the truth because God raised us up as a church in this church God raised you with a DNA that is like God's kingdom that is not like man it's not of man it's not from man neither is it for man but it's for God That God's people will return back. Jesus came to the church. In his day he came to the temple of God. And he had people there in the outer courts. In the courts of the Gentiles. That bought and sold. It was oppressive for the people. They came that their burdens were lifted, more burdens were added to them. They came ready, vulnerable to give an offer to God. But they were abused. Some of them were charged up to 16 times of what it cost to buy something to put on the altars of God. And it had nothing to do with God. It was not God's requirement. But it was because there were people 
that made merchandise of the house of God. And that outer court was as, as big as 10 soccer fields put together. Huge. Bigger than any place in the temple of God. 10 soccer fields. Why was it so big? Because it was in that place where they set up the stalls, when they made merchandise of the temple of God, it was in that grounds it was dedicated for those that don't know Jehovah God to know Him. That was the place where the kingdom of God was explained to strangers. That was the place that was intended for the kingdom of God to be known. Today, we will say for the gospel to be heard and for Jesus to be accepted as savior to those that know him not. It was replaced because they don't know anymore why the house of God. They have converted that place because that's where the temple of God is and it separated the two sides of the community and people want to go over the other side of the town. And what do the people do? They use that as a passageway to be a shortcut to go to the other side. And so there were people that were streaming into the temple, not because they worship, not because they've come to sacrifice, they were passing through and using it as a convenience. What is the house of God to you? How do you see the church? Today, we live in a commercial driven society. Today we live in a time that thrives on shortcuts, save time, convenience. When you come to church, you think that zip in, zip out, if possible, drive through. We want everything to be catered to us. Because the pastor needs us to come to church. We need to show up as a favor. Ah, go to church now. Otherwise, next week, don't know how, what God, how, what will happen now. We have a wrong notion. The devil twisted the truth and he put it into our minds that church is a burden and not a blessing. Coming to the Father's house is not fun. We need to hurry up. The temple of God at that time was used to be a shortcut. My friends, we have done many shortcuts in the house of God. And what do you expect? Because the Bible says what you sow, that you will also reap. I want to pray this final prayer this morning. That it is time for you to restore the altar of God in your life. That when you come to the house of God, you come with the fear of God. That you come to honor Him above everything, especially yourself. Because we have grown to become self-seeking than seeking the face of God. There is a time and there is a place for everything. When it is the Lord's day, the first day of the week, this day belongs to God. 
when King David, I'm going to pray the prayer with you. I want to worship team, would you come up and join me, please? I want to pray with you this morning because this is an important message that I have wrestled with to deliver to you. But God kept prompting me by His Spirit that there are people here in this place that needs to hear this. That God loves you so much that He wants to restore the reality, the joy, and the promises of God that He has for you. When you come to the altars of God, not just to come to church, but to come to the altars of God and realize that unless your life is upon the altar as a sacrifice, you can't see the glory of God. And this church that has been so gloriously raised up, built on the solid foundations of the apostles and the prophet, the kingdom of God is here in this place. Enter in. The altars of God is the very place that makes this the Father's house. If you can see the altar of God, you know that this is the place of prayer in the praise of intercession. It is a place of prayer, praise and it is a place of worship. It is the place of sacrifice. It is the place where God comes and meets with us. We need the altar. We need to replace any idea that we have that this place is anything else than an altar of God. Would you stand with me please as we pray? The Spirit of God is in this place because when the altar of God is established restored back in your life when you see the altars of God in your church your life turns around everything starts to change you need to return back when David when David when King David And it was time for him to take the Ark of the Covenant and bring it back to the city of God. He led the way and as the Ark of the Covenant was being carried by the priests, he led the way and he stepped out and he took one step, two, three, four, Five, six, he stopped. He stopped at the sixth step. Why? He stopped at the sixth step. He would not take the seventh. Because he needed to make ready for the seventh. The sixth is the number of men. Six is when God finishes work, ready for the seventh day. Because what was in store for the seventh, David stopped and built an altar. For six days you will work. He says to those in that farming community, six years you will labor and you will plant and you will reap, but you stop on the seventh. And it is holy unto me. It is a day where that day is sacrificed. It's a year where that year is sacrificed. Put on the altar of God. When you acknowledge God in all things. That it is from God because of Him. That you prosper and you are blessed. David stopped after the sixth step. He's done with six. Now this belongs to God. He built an altar. And he laid a sacrifice. And he made a sacrifice before proceeding. 
Do you acknowledge God in everything? Do you make a deliberate effort to make the sevens belong to God? We lost the altars in our lives. The thing about it is that if you, you don't sacrifice at the altar of God, you will sacrifice. Yes, you will. You will sacrifice at the shopping mall. You will sacrifice at the golf course. Yes, you will. You will sacrifice at some other place. When you don't sacrifice at the altar of God. I want to pray with you today. You have a chorus to sing this. I want to pray with you this morning before I go. And with all humility of heart. I do not come to rebuke you and make it hard. But I came to bring you a word from God. To say how much he loves you. And that's why he tells you, restore that altar on your life. Go ahead and sing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands on the sacrificing today where have you been sacrificing is there an altar of God anymore in your life what is church to you a place to your convenience a place to get to receive only what is church to you Is there an altar? Only by a sacrifice that you bring, that you place, that this place becomes an altar instead of a stage. God requires this of us. The question is, where have we been sacrificing? Is it something that has to do with man and everything to do with man or is it to do with God? If you say to God today, I repent. I need to get it right in my life. I need to sacrifice on an altar. I must rebuke that altar again. I need to do it right. I am going to do it now. Build that altar once more. Restore that altar of mine again unto God. If this is you, would you lift up a hand so I can see you and pray for you? Yeah. Hands lifted up everywhere. You put your hand down. When you raise your hand, you're saying, God, this is not what I've been doing. This is not how I have handled my church. This is not the attitude wherein I have come. And this is not how I have seen it for some time now. 
that it must be with an altar and I must come ready to sacrifice to seek God and I want it right now and I want to repent and I want to turn back and return back to God if this is you one more time lift up a hand yes your hands are raised quickly come down to the front meet me at the altar more important meet God we are here before God come come together come get off from where you are and come this is the altars of God come just keep walking down you need to come don't come by obligation don't come because you've raised your hand you want to come you want to come because this is standing in front of God you're committed to say I'm not anymore coming in front of a stage I'm coming in front of an altar it's not what man can do for me it's not how people can serve me it's how I will serve God and what I will do for God my friends this morning God is so real his spirit is right by your side he loves you that's why he's you are here and you are listening to all these things and say I need God in my life I need my sins forgiven I want Jesus as my Savior I want the peace of God I want to reconnect back to God I want the living God to be with me 24 7 and this is you I want you to walk down just walk down quickly there's so many people here already join them come yes come 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 down there's some more is there some more yes come come yes thank you come come right down come and join them can you just move over to the side some of you in the middle go ahead thank you very much for coming there's some more coming right there yes is there anyone else yes come 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 you need to come and you want Jesus in your heart come welcome welcome as counselors I believe you're watching who's coming down to the front come 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 right down to the front I want to pray with you this morning would you sing this song and let us sing it together now when when you are singing this don't think somebody's gonna come down to pray I always say in my church I make the order call or I hesitate to make the order calls because people have a consumer attitude when you come down somebody will lay hands on you and, and, and something will happen and it's somebody doing it for you and God had to take care of everything no when you're here this morning at the altars it's your business with God you don't need anyone to touch you you don't even need God to touch you you said I need to touch the altars of God I really need I really need to go back to the altars of God and I need to get my heart right I need to return sing it and sing it to him Blessed be the name of the Lord he is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. Singing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. we come to you just as we are with our hands lifted up to you we say Lord forgive us we repent we turn our hearts back to you and we say Lord we come just as we are forgive us we turn from our wicked ways we return back to the altar of God 
and we said here we are to sacrifice here we are Lord to wait for the fire of God to come to consume our sacrifice that is not of the flesh but of the spirit and God as we turn to you Lord heal our heart heal our backsliding we turn back to you Lord never to go backwards again but forward we go Lord we stand at the altars of God with our hands upon it and we say Lord from henceforth we are yours Jesus my Savior and my Lord my God thank you Jesus in Jesus name Amen Amen, Amen. Praise the Lord Thank you Jesus Pastor Raymond thank you so much the Lord has spoken very clearly and it's been it's a serious message really the Lord is saying bring our carnal Christianity to an end stop just living for our flesh stop just being a consumer and stop being lied to by the devil with all carnal things and just things of the flesh and a consumer attitude this will not do for God any attempts of the flesh in trying to live a life of Christianity church as well as trying to be able to please God will not do this morning you've made your decision you need to follow up with your decision because nobody is going to follow up with you it's you and your God who created you and is who has given you a new lease of life pride must give way flesh must give way satisfaction of our desires just just to keep us entertained must give way to the priority of God and his kingdom I have hesitated over the years now over the months now since I've take, uh, come back here to just give nice messages and there could be some criticism about messages that has gone before, be, be, beyond half an hour and so on this kind of attitude will not do that kind of carnality will not be able to build your altar before God it's either you are a true worshipper or you are a consumer some of us make a lot of effort to serve God many of you need now to make your own effort to come before the Lord and serve Him and not just out of your own convenience I'm going to pray that the Lord will receive your prayer just now as I will disperse this meeting but the seventh day some of us may have all the justification on why you can't come on the seventh day some of the cell leaders try very hard to connect 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 buy you lunch or go out here go out there and so on hoping that you will come back to church and you've got some of you got many reasons why you can't come how much do you need another human being to come catching up with you this morning God is catching up with us you decide I thought I only am the one that preached a serious message. Pastor Raymond also preached a very serious message today. <laughs> but he preached it with tears just now because the Lord is speaking and we are responding. Father, we want to come before you. Lift your hands and your heart towards God and say, Father, please.
Take me, Father God, to be an offering unto you. Accept me as an offering unto you. Let my life be a living sacrifice unto, on your altar. So that you can make me the person you want me to be to serve you for the purposes of your kingdom that I would be able to lead my family in the same way that my children and children's children also will be people laid before you as living sacrifices for the purpose of your kingdom and your glory accept the prayer of everyone as we stand here and help us Holy Spirit because you're the comforter you are the advocate before the Father God on our behalf that you may help us to walk this road this pathway with God in us and we in Him so Father, let your grace now be upon each and every one of us. Father, you bless your people. Just like you had this prayer in number six, that the Lord will bless them, your people. The Lord will cause his face to shine upon them. The Lord will be gracious to them. The Lord will bless them and cause His face to shine upon them and give them peace. As we bring this service to an end, Lord, seal the work of God in the hearts of everyone till we meet again next week, next Sunday. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. We can sing this song one more time. Blessed.